Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is start using Masonite. Masonite is a web framework in Python. It, from what I've read in the documentation, it seems like it has a very Ruby on Rails-esque type feel, which I definitely like a lot better as far as like the workflow uh, versus Django where you know you have to kind of really be particular about like slashes and use a lot of regex and and the view, the controller functions are referred to as views and yeah, I mean, I know how to use Django and it's fun, but um, I like sort of other workflows better. And ideally, I actually like more minimalist frameworks like Express and JavaScript and uh, Fast API, Flask um, inside um, Python. I like Sinatra in Ruby, Echo in Go, you know, where basically you kind of build it out. I like to know how everything's put together, but when it comes to more like batteries included type frameworks, I do like sort of the Ruby on Rails feel. So Masonite seems like it would have that. I have dabbled with it a little bit, but it's been a few weeks, so you're going to kind of refresh yourself with myself. Okay, so we're going to bring up the Masonite documentation. I'm going to create a whole new fresh virtual environment and everything. So docs.masoniteproject.com, here we go. Let's look for introduction installation. Okay, Python 3.6. So let's check to see what version of Python we have. So I'll type in Python dash dash version. I have Python 3.90. Good. Okay, and I'm going to be again creating a new virtual environment. So you should have at least 3.3, but for Masonite, you're going to need 3.6. So make sure you have uh, at least Python 3.6. And again, you are in your particular computer, you might have it installed under Python 3. So you can always check there as well. Okay, so for me, both of them point to the same Python install. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So this is just assuming that you haven't installed Python, so that's just doing that part. Okay, and let's create our virtual environment. Okay, so luckily, since Python 3.3, you don't have to like download make virtual environment, or you don't have to have PyEnv to create a virtual environment. It's actually built into Python. All you have to do is do the Python command, dash M, and I'm going to call this, well, first is VNV is the command. And actually, first I have to make a folder. So let me do that first. Um, okay, well, actually, we'll just call this Masonite or Mason ENV. Okay, and let's see what it does. And see what it does, it creates a folder called Mason ENV in my current folder that actually houses my virtual environment. Right now it's not active, so I gotta activate it. So the way you would do that is you would type in source venv slash bin. Well, I have to write the right name folder. So the folder is called Mason ENV on my computer. Slash bin slash activate. Okay, and see now I can see that the Mason environment has been created. And the reason why we do this is because the, the virtual environment, when it's active, it's like having a separate, isolated install of Python on your computer, which means right now, any library I've installed so far doesn't exist. And this this is like a fresh install of Python. So if I do pip list, see there's like no other libraries other than like the base setup ones. Okay, and it wants me to upgrade, I'll upgrade later. Cool. Okay, so we have our virtual environment, and that means I can install Masonite here, and I'm not mixing it with like my Django dependencies or my Flask dependencies or whatever. Cool. So now that that's activated, let's actually install Masonite. Okay, so I'll just do a pip install Masonite. Okay, and that's going to install Masonite. That might take a second. Now, if you ever use like Laravel, Laravel uses something called Artisan to kind of do a lot of its like command line prompts and command line commands in the same way that like Rails uses Rake. In this case, uh, here in Python, Masonite is using uh, a library called Craft to kind of create its command line tools. Okay, so when you see Craft, think of it as uh, the same as Rake in Ruby or Artisan in uh, PHP. Okay, so now it wants me to run craft just to double check to see that I, craft got installed. Okay, that looks like it did. Okay, it's, it's telling me the different commands. 
good. See Masonite version, all that stuff. Good, good, good. Uh, cool. And you know, now taking a look at it, I'm I'm not 100% sure if Craft is essentially a third-party thing like Rake or Artisan, or if just Craft is just what Mason Knight made, which would make sense with the name Mason Knight, uh, craftsmanship, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that, that kind of makes sense. So now let's create our first project. Okay, so again, I'm in this Mason Knight folder. My virtual environment is in effect, and we're gonna do Craft New. Okay, let me just see what was asked me to specify name. We're currently only interested in the craft new command to create a new project. Just run craft new. Okay, so it doesn't say me to put a project name, so I'll just write craft new. Ah, I see what it did. It created an application right in that folder, which is not exactly what I want to do, but we'll go with it. I wanted to kind of make this a folder with many Masonite projects, but that's fine. Cool, 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 cool. Let's see here. Should I just delete this? Yeah, let me delete this. Uh, so let's do that, 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 that. Not that. That, 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 that. Delete all that. Okay, cool. Because what I really want to do, so I'm going to create a, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder, make your project one. So that way I can isolate that project. So that way I can keep using the same virtual environment for multiple Masonite projects. I will CD into that folder, project one, and then I will run craft new again in there. And then see, we see like, oh, there's my project in there, nice. Okay, this will get us the latest Masonite project template and unzip it for you. We just need to go into our new project directory and install the dependencies in our requirements.txt. Okay. And that's right there. So that means I would just have, I think it's a pip install. Um, we have to look that up. pip install. Because there's a flag that's required. There it is, dash r. I always forget the flag. Dash r requirements.txt. That'll install all the dependencies that are listed here in the requirements.txt, which are just these three libraries here. So that did that. And again, if I do pip list, I can see everything that's been installed. So here's everything that's been installed so far. And again, there's a lot list more than what I've typed in pip install for, but that's because um, there's a lot of things that Masonite installed because they're dependencies of Masonite. Okay, cool. So that's cool. Now let's run our dev server. Craft serve. That makes sense. And I created a server on 40,000. So let's check it out. Localhost 8000. And there it is. Masonite 3.0. Okay, that's a, a nice landing page. Okay, so far I'm in, I'm enjoying this workflow. Um, I will turn off this server. Okay, so now let's actually create stuff. Okay, we already did all that, creating a blog, the routing. Okay, so here we go. So, looks like the routes are defined in this folder called routes slash web.py. So let's go take a look at that, routes web.py and then here we can see, and then I'll, I'll just take a little bit more room from here. And that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so you do get, you put the name, looks like it's gotta be uppercase. Then the, the, where the, the, the endpoint. And, okay, like, and basically like Rails, it's the controller, then the method on that controller. And then there's the whole name feature. I never really use that in Rails, so. I won't use that much here either, but it's a thing you can do. You can name your routes. Okay, so we'll start off by creating a view and control to create a blog post. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm not seeing any commands, routes, inside routes. Okay, so we're going to create a new section of routes. Blog routes. 
We're going to use a get method because we're going to make a get request. And that's going to be to slash blog. And that's going to be pointing to the block controller, which I'm assuming we have not made yet. And it's going to use the method show. Okay. So again, if you've you ever used Rails, this should look very familiar. It's always just basically the controller and the method that controller class has available. Um, okay. Yeah, but it's saying, hey, it doesn't, we need to make the controller. So let's create our controller. Okay, so uh, here we have the command. So kind of like in Rails, you would do like Rails G controller. We'll do the same thing here, but here's going to be Python craft controller blog. So let's run that command. The controller was created successfully. So let's take a look at that. That should be in. It says app HTTP controllers. So in our application, we have our HTTP stuff. Here's our controllers. And there's our block controller. Nice. Let's take a look what we got in here. So we got a request, we got view, we got controller. Okay, there's the constructor. Okay, that's just passing the request to itself. So that was accessible. And then there's like the default view show because in our routes, we see we're referring to the show method. So essentially when anyone goes to slash blog, there it's gonna look inside this class here, blog controller, and look for this function show to determine like what it's gonna do. So that's essentially what's going on here. So that's just showing you what it looks like. Let's return a view. Okay. And just basically we're gonna return view.render. So basically right now we're Right now I'm not creating an API. I am doing like the full stack thing. So if you ever use Ruby and use like ERB files or Django, like Jinja templates, this is kind of where I'm going with that right now. Cause I'm just following the tutorial. Okay. View that render blog. Okay. So that means we are probably gonna have to create a view that's called blog. So we're using the view, which again, this is, it was imported over here. So this view function. Cool self view view okay now here notice here we type hinted the view class this is what is meant what calls auto resolving dependency injections if this doesn't make sense to you right now don't worry the more you read the more you'll understand okay so i mean to me what this reads like is what we're doing is we're just injecting view as a parameter to the function and basically because we typed we saying, hey, this view parameter has to be of the type view, which is this class that was injected here. It, it basically knows to inject itself. I don't have to go inject it because the the library knows that it's of that type. There's only one class like that, so it just creates a new instance of it and, and injects it. This is kind of like how Angular does dependency injection, where basically you create these parameters to the constructor um, that are typed as the thing you're as the dependency you're injecting. Um, I've seen this in Java as well. Okay, so that's essential. That means all that means is you're you're injecting the view. Like that's the ability to generate views. It's not. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, but that's essentially what matters to you as the person who's using this. Okay, it makes life easier for you. You don't have to really kind of think about why it works. It just works. That's the beauty of dependency injection. You inject the things you need. Um, okay, now we are returning blog, so we need to craft a view. So here's a command: Python craft view blog so let's see here uh, looks like that should be in resources so let me just close all these resources templates blog okay so here's blog which right now says nothing so we'll put some text in it just we'll just follow the tutorial this is a blog so now we'll run the server again python craft serve okay so now let's go to localhost slash 8000 slash blog this is a blog ta-da you did it okay so we've made a page okay so that's essentially it now my question is um, let's not well should we go to the database setup 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. I won't go through the authentication bit, but let's see here. Let's take a look at how we would connect the database. So in order to register these users, we will use the database. Hopefully you already have some kind of local database setup, but we will assume you do not. In this case, you can use SQLite. Now we just need to change a few environment variables. So Mason, I can create the SQLite database project and they look up like this. So you would just, okay, so here's the different versions. So I would just change this like Postgres and then the other stuff I would just change to match my local database. That's pretty straightforward. And you would put that in a .env file, which is right there. So I would look right there is the database stuff. So I would just do that. Okay, and then if you've used Rails or Django or any of these, you know the deal with migrations. Okay, so once you've set the correct renders, we'd migrate, that would create the table initially. Okay, let's see about making migrations. So you would create a migration file, yep. And you would enter it in. So this is this is one of the things that's again more like Rails. So in Rails you generate this blank migration file and you write in the migrations. Well in Django, what you do is you actually create a class that defines your model and then it generates the migration for you. Um that part I like <laughs> about what Jang how Django works. Like and I'm sure there's like different sort of like implementation details that makes it where you can't necessarily always have it all bundled up the same way or you can't have the best parts of all of them. There's trade-offs, I'm sure. Okay, but you'd create the migration file, then run the migration, got it, makes sense. Then we have to create a model. So this is all pretty much like Rails, but in Python. Okay, so overall nothing too, too surprising. Okay, but so I think that kind of captures the idea. Like, the point of this video was to to cover enough of this that you could feel comfortable going in there and diving in and learning more of Masonite. Um, because one, I like Python as a language quite a bit. I, I like it better than I like Ruby, but I like Rails as a web framework more. So what I really like about Masonite is that it gives me a workflow that I like better in a language I like better. Um, I now, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that sort of like home for me is is JavaScript. But I like Python quite a bit. There's a lot of things I do like about the language. Just a few things about the way it handles classes that I find not my cup of tea, but it's uh, pretty sweet. But yeah, so basically everything else should be pretty similar. Like, let's see here. This looks like it's using Jinja. Let me see if it mentions that specifically. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and create some templates, specific pose, create two close. Just wanna see if it's specifically, are we using Jinja here? Very simple, showing the author, should be the process, doesn't mention it specifically, I'm assuming it is, it looks a lot like Jinja, but it's been a while since I've used Jinja, so I might just, I've seen so many different templating languages at this point that I just kind of, they all just kind of bleed into each other, so I could just be confusing it with like handlebars or mustache, um, anyways. I will leave it at that. My name is Alex Merced. This has been an introduction to the Masonite web framework on Python. Have a great day. Enjoy. And again, make sure to subscribe to the video, like the video. Um, also, um, head over to devnurse.com, join the Slack community and the Discord community so that we can meet some other developers. And also, if you have any suggestions or requests for videos, you can message me there and I'm more than glad to uh, take requests. Have a great day and enjoy.